want to know one of the most important decisions you'll make when going solar? Sure, the panels are important, but choosing the right inverter is even more important. And today, I'm going to tell you how to choose the best solar inverter for you. The inverter takes the crazy high DC voltage from your panels up to 1000 volts and turns it into the slightly less deadly 230 volt AC that your appliances use. To do this efficiently, it's got to find the perfect combination of voltage and current that will get the maximum power from the solar panel on a second by second basis. Good inverters have better software to do this optimization and it will generally handle light shade and multiple roof orientations better than the cheap crap inverters with the less developed algorithms. Your inverter also needs to respect local electricity network rules about how much power you can send back into the grid at any one time. And often it needs to dynamically change its generation to match what's allowed to be sent back into the grid at any moment in time. In many states, it must stop exports altogether if the grid's having one of its meltdowns. And good inverters can communicate with your appliances like your hot water, battery or EV charger to let them know how much solar is currently available, saving you from importing expensive electricity from the grid. So what I'm saying is getting a decent inverter is not something you want to cheap out on. Let's run you through the different types of solar inverters. String inverters, this is the most common type. There's one box on your wall that all your panels connect to, usually near your meter box. They're simple, proven, they get the job done. Micro inverters. Think of micro inverters as giving each panel its own tiny brain. They're about the size of a paperback book, available at all good booksellers, and sit under each solar panel. They're great for tricky roofs and they're safer than a string inverter because they run at lower AC voltages. I've got 35 on the roof of my straw house. Yes, I live in a straw house. When it comes to microinverter brands, go with a brand called Enphase. The rest are just pretenders, in my opinion. Don't be a sap, Dad. These are just crappy knockoffs. I know a genuine Panaphonics when I see it. Optimized string inverters. With optimized string inverters, you still get a big inverter on the wall, similar to a conventional string inverter. But each panel gets its own little optimizer to help it perform better. Solar Edge is the brand to go to if you want optimizers. Hybrid inverters like this one are string inverters that let you add batteries easier at a later date. If you're just buying solar and not planning on adding batteries in the next two years, they're generally not worth the extra expense. If you are planning on adding batteries soonish, then using a hybrid string inverter can save you one to two thousand dollars. And that's because you don't need a second battery inverter and it's already wired in ready to take the battery with a relatively easy battery installation. New for 2025 are modular hybrid inverters with a company called SIG Energy leading the charge. So these are stackable inverters that stack very quickly on top of other home energy devices like EV chargers or home batteries. So you can just buy the inverter to start with, which is this top box, and then when you're ready to add batteries or an EV charger, your electrician just comes along and simply slots in the modules below it. These promise even faster battery installation than the hybrid inverters I talked about before. So that's the different inverter types. Now let me break down solar inverter brands by comparing them to car brands. Because while you might not know a Fronius from a Solis, you definitely know your Toyotas from your Ferraris. Budget brands like Goodwe. These are like your Kia from 10 years ago. They'll get you there, but don't expect any bells or whistles or to impress the neighbors. Mid-range, like SunGrow or Sig Energy. Think Toyota Corolla territory. Reliable, decent value, does the job without any fuss. Premium, like Fronius. Now we're talking Mercedes-Benz. More expensive, absolutely. But you're getting European engineering, rock solid reliability, and support that picks up the phone when you call. Then finally, you've got top end like Enphase Micro Inverters. This is your rebranded Jaguar. Cutting edge tech, all the fancy features, a price tag to match, and very polarizing. Some say they're not worth the extra money. And the extra features of the micro inverters, some say, are exaggerated by expensive marketing. But hey, if you wanna make a statement, 
And yes, I have got Enphase on my roof. So there's no need to buy the most expensive Enphase microinverters. But on the flip side, just like cars, the absolute cheapest option usually isn't smartest in the long run. What does a premium brand cost over a budget one? Lots. The price difference between a budget end Goodwee and a top end Fronia string inverter is about two and a half thousand dollars for a 10 kilowatt system. And if you want Enphase microinverters, you're looking at paying at least $4,000 more over the budget gear for 10 kilowatts. Look, I'm not here to tell you how to spend your money, but personally, I'd advise spending that little bit more for a mid-range to premium inverter over a budget one. Only spending on the super premium Enphase if you really need the benefits of a microinverter. Because you've got a super complex roof or you're scared of big DC voltages on your roof, which the microinverters avoid. Now let me tell you what to look for in a grid connect solar inverter. First up, is it even allowed to be connected to the grid in Australia? Check the Clean Energy Council's approved inverter list. If it's not on there, run away. Also suss out the company importing it. Do they have an office here or are they just some mob flogging inverters from the other side of the world? When something goes wrong, you really want someone local for your installer to deal with to get it fixed pronto. Size matters too. These days you can and should put more panels into your inverter than on the surface it looks rated for. Without batteries, you can oversize by 33%. So a 10 kilowatt inverter is allowed to have 13.3 kilowatts of solar panels attached. This gives you more power in the mornings, afternoons, and when the sun's not super strong. If you have batteries, a loophole allows you to use double the amount of panels than the inverter output power is rated at, as long as the inverter manufacturer allows it, and most of them do. This is a great way to save money on the inverter, but still get heaps of panels on your roof. For example, the SunGrow 10 kilowatt hybrid inverter with batteries can accept 20 kilowatts of panels, which ensures you have plenty of solar to power your home and charge your batteries, even on overcast days. The bottom line, get as many panels as your roof and wallet can handle, then match them with a quality inverter that'll last. And remember, those in the know have way more panels than inverter capacity. What about installation? Let me tell you about installing inverters and location is everything. First rule of Inverter Club, keep it in the shade. Electronics hate heat and an inverter baking in the sun all day will have a shortened lifespan. A cool garage is the best place for your inverter, but if that's not an option, the next best place is next to your meter box. If there's no shade there, you need a plan B. Get a simple shade put over it. Model specific covers are best and they cost two to 300 bucks. A good inverter in the shade is worth two in the sun, trust me. Now, how long do inverters last? Good ones should last 10 to 20 years, but don't expect the cheap ones to make it past 10. Warranties usually run from five to 15 years and some brands will let you pay extra to extend that warranty. And for God's sake, read the warranty fine print. You don't want to find out your inverter needs to go to China for repairs when it breaks. Yes, Australia Consumer Law will have your back in that situation and it says that your installer must do the right thing regardless of the manufacturer's actions, but it's much easier to get a good outcome if your inverter is supported by a manufacturer with an Australian office and Australian staff. Right, let's talk about how you actually know what your inverter's doing. Most inverters have lights that tell you whether they're working or whether they're dead, with an app if you want more detailed information. The app can tell you how much power you've generated today or historically, what you're generating right now, and the good ones will also tell you how much grid electricity and how much solar electricity your home is using. If you get an El Cheapo install, you won't get that last bit. So you'll be in the dark as to how much solar is being used by your home, which is kind of useless. Now, let's talk about efficiency. Old school inverters were about 93% efficient but the modern ones are hitting 96% or better. But efficiency isn't everything. Take Fronius, they've got active cooling. That means an internal fan, and that makes them last longer, but powering the fan knocks their efficiency down a bit. I'm telling you, it's okay to trade some efficiency for longevity. Oh, and don't stress about how much electricity inverters use at night. Even the biggest residential solar inverters only use about five watts when they're sleeping. That's less than your TV uses on standby. To finish up, what brands of inverters would I recommend to a friend? Well, I've put together a chart on my website of all the brands I trust and where they sit on price. I've linked to it in the description below. 
inverters can only get on this chart if they are reliable and well supported with the manufacturer staffing a proper Australian office. Your inverter is the brains of your entire solar system. Skimp on it now and you could be kicking yourself for years to come. I immediately regret this decision. So while most people don't need to buy the Ferrari of inverters, at least make sure you're getting a reliable brand trusted by good installers that has proper household monitoring. If you're only getting solar panels, a good string inverter is the go. If you're getting a battery in the next couple of years, consider a hybrid inverter to make that battery installation cheaper. If you have a crazy complicated roof or you want your system to run at safer voltages, consider micro inverters that optimize each panel individually. Ready to get a quality system installed by people who know what they're doing? Head to solarquotes.com.au right now and enter your postcode. I'll match you with up to three trusted installers I rate who use good quality inverters suited to your home. No dodgy crap allowed.